Making games is hard, but finishing them is even harder, especially if you ain't using the game engine. Today, I want to show you how I completed my Coffee Break roguelike using Python and Pygame. So, let's dive in. I started out a drawing this little blob enemy dude, and after that, I experimented with a few more ideas. Then, it was time to code the mechanics, which I did by reusing the player code. Check out this giant rat I made. The next step was to make the batty move when the player did. I just wanted to get things working, so I made the enemy mirror the movement of the player, and this rat slipping around like a greased up hog. Next, I made the rodent move around randomly, and I still need to prevent him from going rabid. Then, I made the choice to bring in, well, more mischief. I needed to make sure there weren't any weird glitches or issues when increasing the enemy count. I fixed all the bugs that I could, and then it was time for one of the biggest technical hurdles since I made the level generation, adding the player attack. Well, after some trial and error, our hero can now eradicate these pests. I gave the enemy instances some health, so they need a few hits to take down. Then I worked on making the enemy more aggressive when the player gets too close. This part annoyed me, but it had to get done. Once I had these guys chasing me around, it was time for them to attack. I studied squeaks and squalls a bit to see how good gets went about this. Basically, when you get within the vicinity of a bad guy, they go into attack stance where they stop moving. Then when you walk around them, there's a random chance that they can strike you and deal some damage. With this, the basic enemy system was finally complete. The game had now reached a point where printing out stuff to the terminal emulator just wasn't going to work anymore. I needed to make a graphical user interface, and more specifically, a heads up display. Initially, I just kind of borrowed some level space to slap my status bar on there, as you can see all self, but I later added more window height due to a bug. After that, I started drawing the status bar or bottom panel that would display health, money, and buffs. This is what I decided on. Then I tested it out with the game itself, but soon it was apparent the colors did not work. So I recolored it to something more neutral, and then later I chose to darken it a bit. Afterwards, I made it show the player health so that I wouldn't need to rely on Python's print function anymore. Now we can see our health in game when the player takes damage from an enemy. All I can say is, Ooh. I now needed a way for the player to pick up items and also money, which I could then show on the HUD. It was high time to make enemy drops. You know, like valuables. I whipped up some pixel art for these new items, including the key to the escape room. I decided to start with the vase drops before doing the enemy ones. Then I coded in a special key vase that spawns in every room. I had to rewrite the vase spawning because I was using some jank recursive function. Anyway, I know some people, including Goodgus, wanted to see the key randomly come from enemies sometimes, but for now, I decided against that as I don't want enemy fights to be required. Of course, I can always add that in a future update. Anyway, I gave the player the functionality to pick up items, and then I made it so that when you find the key, this big old icon pops up in the status bar. I had my own personal stretch goals where the key being obtained would have more visual interest, but I don't want to work on this forever. Oh, I added the low probability of getting a hard item to heal yourself during a level playthrough. I don't know, maybe this healing feature could use more love down the road. Speaking of down the road, on a foggy night, I began working on Fog of War. Now, Squeaks and Squalls use an approach more consistent with roguelike games, but mine was a distance to object kind of thing. I started putting this in, and then I messed around with Python profiling for no reason. I actually fixed a dumb performance issue way later on when I realized I was still calling these opacity functions even when all the tiles were fully opaque. Well, Fog of War is good and all, but the game needed more enemies. For a while, I wasn't sure how I was going to build this system, but I kept it simple. Now, there's less of a rat infestation and more of a hodgepodge of freaks in these damp stone halls. The game was now ready for sound effects. I downloaded Lab Chirp and spent way too much time trying to figure out why. Why it didn't work on Linux Mint, but once I did, I made some sound effects. Take a listen. I needed to make a few new areas. Squeaks and Squalls has three areas so I went with five. This decision greatly added to my workload, and I spent a considerable time making these, but I like world building, so it didn't bother me. Please tell me your favorite world in the comments. I needed to add upgrades to the game, and I thought a shop would be a great way to add player agency, though I wanted to do things differently than squeaks and squalls. I copied the level gen file and made a pre-built room. I had to create a scene system and also a product system, but once everything was set, player could now upgrade attack, defense, health, and also replenish health. Also, I made this creepy shopkeeper who reveals his true colors the further you go in the game. Buyer beware. Then something silly happened. I accidentally deleted about half of my lines of code from my main.py. This was a devastating moment since I hadn't frequently backed the game up. However, I knew there had to be a way to recover this data, and it turns out there was. I have to tip my fedora to stack exchange this time around, and also give a shout out to Andy M. This stack exchange post helped me painstakingly and archaeologically reconstruct my game piece by piece. I fixed everything within a few hours and was very relieved. And then I added this random sign that shows you the level, the world, your progress, 
in the name of the dungeon. Following that, I decided to call the name of the game Freaks and Halls. Hmm. Maybe not the best, but whatever. Then I spent countless hours making game over screens, pop-up messages, and a hundred other little details that I don't even remember. Felt like the finish line kept getting further and further away. Anyhow, check out the game and check out the source code. I hope you have some fun playing and or learning from my spaghetti pythons. Make sure to like and subscribe. And stay tuned for new game dev videos coming down the pipe.